Dear friends, hello. Um, we are going to discuss today the topic of uh, young adults at work, the, how we can make them feel better and how they can choose their job and their working environment. First of all, I would like to tell you a bit about my point of view. I have three gifted children. I am a son of two um, doctors and I have a strong interest in psychology. I'm not a professional in psychology, I must say, um, but I have been volunteering to work with children uh, for 30 years now. I have also been a uh, I have also accompanied depressive children in uh, Astri, which has been quite difficult actually. In Mensa, sometimes that seems a bit easier because we give people books that they can read and they're very interested in reading these books. So they progress very quickly, I must say. Sometimes just speaking to people for uh, 40, 45 minutes can make a big change in their life. I would also like to encourage you to go and see the conference this week by Eric David, which will be very interesting. He's a uh, professional and it, uh, also in his personal life he has achieved quite a lot. So what about myself? I have found out at the age of 44 that I was uh, gifted. I mean, I did take tests before, about um, two years before taking my A-levels. And at the time, I was told to not tell my parents, to not tell anyone about my results. I was not told. I didn't know it. You didn't know? I didn't know my parents didn't know. So you didn't get the results? No. Okay, you didn't? Okay, sorry. So I didn't get my results, and people assumed it was better to not know and to not tell people that you were gifted. Now, of course, we know that is not true. You should tell your parents and people that you are gifted, that it's good news, but that, however, there might be some difficulties that are linked to giftedness, and that those difficulties need, need, need to be addressed and taken care of. So this is a very important point I was raising, because sometimes even trained psychologists, even doctors that do have a diploma, are not aware of the importance of telling people that you are gifted. And they think that even it's better that people don't know if they are gifted. So I think Mensa has a really important task to tell in every country that it is important to tell people they are gifted. And it's quite stupid to not take any actions upon it. You should tell people is good news, giftedness is a great talent, but also it comes with great difficulties and sometimes risks. So the earlier you recognize giftedness, the earlier you can take some actions and the greater you reduce any risks of uh, psychosis or other difficulties that may be more difficult to overcome at a later stage. First of all, I would like to give you two definitions. First of all, what is a gifted person? Well, I will give you the definition of Mensa. We consider that a gifted person is a person that at any um, recognized intelligence test has, been, has attained the top 2% of the score in comparison to the whole population. So, um, relating to the WISC scale, that would be a minimum score of 132. I am referring myself to the scale that goes now up into 160. I would also like to define hyperactivity and attention deficit disorder. Because sometimes it is um, a lot different than what people think. Sometimes people think that if people are not agitated and if they are calm, that they are not suffering from these disorders. Um, but this is wrong. Actually, um, there are three, pil three pillars of um, these, these, these disorders. Um, uh, so the first of all, uh, the, so the second pillar is agitation and the third pillar is hy hyperactivity. And I mean, we see hyperactivity in many people, even the French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, who actually is doing many things at the same time, who might be, ha who might be doing 10 projects at the same time without actually finishing one. So the three pillars are very important, the three pillars of the attention deficit disorder. So first of all, it is the agitation, motor agitation, what we call it. That can be people that are nervous. You can see a nervousness in the hands. Sometimes even if they sleep, they can have one of their legs moving. And, um, and then, of course, uh, there is also hyperactivity. And attention deficit disorder as well, the third pillar. Um, there are various treatments, but they vary according to the different um, dimensions of the various pillars. And there is now um, a new treatment called TEACH. Okay, no, okay, excuse me, there is now a new test, um, so that you can t uh, test people and see what dimensions they are f suffering from. And so this test uh, will reveal the appropriate treatment, whether you should treat one pillar, the second pillar, or maybe all three pillars at the same time.
Generally, some people might recommend medicine, but uh, for people with attention deficit disorder, uh, cognitive behavior therapies can be really beneficial. And generally, just those therapies will make a great impact on people. So first of all, let me address the issue of the well-being and of um, uh, feeling, or maybe feeling not at ease. Uh, first of all, you should know that uh, young adults and also teenagers that are gifted um, do have uh, certain difficulties. And there are three problems I would like to address. I will go from the uh, easiest problem to the most c complex problem. So the first problem is communication and also uh, relations. These, can have, these problems can have very light forms and sometimes they are not visible at all. People would tend to think that, gifted people would tend to think that other people are like them. For instance, from an ethical point of view. And the results will be that they will not get on because they are, uh, they are not uh, alike. I would like to tell you about a little um, a metaphor that, that uh, I think is very appropriate here. It is one of the ugly little duck that didn't know at the time that he was a duck, that he was a swan, excuse me, and he felt uh, not at ease at all in his family and with, and with everything up until the time where he discovered he was a swan and actually was very happy about this. So I think this uh, metaphor is very appropriate because sometimes people tend to try and be like other people, try and be like ducks when really they are swans. And I, tr I think that people should not try and build themselves a mask in order to conceal um, who they really are. Donc la, la première règle de communication et de relation, c'est finalement, je suis un signe et je suis entouré de canards. Alors la bonne nouvelle, et c'est pour ça que vous voyez un petit caméléon. So the first rule of communication and relation is that um, we are swans, but we're surrounded by many ducks. We, the good news is we have a great gift of um, being chameleon-like, which means that we can adopt different colors, different traits, very easily. And that it won't be much of an effort to seem like a duck when really we are a swan. So the good news is uh, we can be ducks, but the problem is we will be communicating in sign language most of the time. That can be with people that don't actually understand us, I mean. So that would be with the teachers, with our colleagues, with our friends at university, and later at work as well, with professionals, and even with our boss. So I think the first important thing about communication is to know that we will be communicating with people that are not swans, like us. Donc effectivement, la première difficulté de communication, c'est je me mets au niveau de la personne en face et donc je, je mets un traducteur euh, simultané et je parle en canard. Et quand je calcule les intentions des autres personnes, je ne pense pas non plus qu'ils fonctionnent comme des signes, mais comme des canards. Alors, Another great problem is the one that we need autonomy. Many of us need great autonomy and uh, like uh, little rules. And that can be very difficult with when uh, being in contact with other people, especially there can be difficulties um, according to hi uh, hierarchies and people that actually stand above us. There is also another problem of uh, initiative taking. We uh, like to take a lot of initiative, and sometimes that is um, not very easy, especially if we are surrounded by people that are not like us. We want uh, we also have a strong desire for justice, and though we know there is not much justice or not enough justice in the world, we have a very strong passion about this, which is very difficult knowing that the people around us do not necessarily have the same aims. Deux signes dans un monde de canards qui se fiche éperdument de la justice. Et enfin, dernier sujet, donc sur ce, ce point qui est le plus léger, le plus facile à résoudre. So the last um, uh, point I would like to say on this subject, which was um, communication and relation problems, is the fact that this can be accompanied by mental illnesses that can be very light, but that can also be very serious. Because you must know there is a gap, uh, a mental gap as well, between uh, gifted people and non-gifted people. And sometimes that can be very difficult, especially also at work. People at work may consider that our actions 
actions are inappropriate or inadequate and we may be punished as a consequence of this. We could be rejected and there could be sanctions from our boss, for instance. Then I would like to talk to you about emotional cleaning and also something I haven't addressed before is hypersensitivity and touchiness maybe as well, as well as our sensitivity to noise. And this is something I was recently talking to you about uh, uh, with uh, Ariel Ada. Uh, she said it is very difficult uh, for us and that sometimes it is very important for us to do emotional cleaning. This is why on the slide you see a man that is taking a bath at the moment, which, is, which represents him cleaning himself and doing his emotional cleaning, especially in this uh, world where he is surrounded of ducks. So the third aspect I would like to discuss, which is the most um, important, the most significant, and also the most complicated point to solve, is, and I think we have an important role here to help people to really recognize uh, their giftedness as soon as possible, because if, we don't do it, if they don't know it early, then at some stage it may be too late. Okay. Là, vraiment, Do you want me to start again, this thing? So, okay. So basically, we need to recognize really early, really early our giftedness in order to avoid some disorders. And here we're especially speaking about mental illnesses. And I think that sometimes these people don't recognize their giftedness early enough to take precautions and to take measures according to it. This explains why today in our society there are so many people that are actually mentally ill on a really bad stage and they ha suffer from paranoia or schizophrenia. Actually, I was speaking to someone recently who told me that there were hundreds of different types of mental illnesses. So, I would like to, what, what shall we do? Basically, I would like to give you a little story about, uh, imagine just if you would go to the carnival in Venice and you would be ha wearing a mask all day the way we were referring to it before. So um, you will take your bath in the evening and take off your mask, your mask that um, pretends that you are a duck, that you are non-gifted, that you're just like all the rest of the population, when really you are gifted and you are a swan. And so sometimes when these people wear masks all their lives or all day, they forget who they are. Are they gifted? Are they not? Are they swans? Are they ducks? And this means that their defense mechanism may not be very efficient. So one of the big problems here is that um, if we don't recognize this early enough, there can't be any treatment, and we need to ca um, take care of this really early, at an early stage, in order to increase our defense mechanism and to take um, measures on this because unfortunately the consequences may be very drastic. For boys, for instance, um, the consequences may be depression and suicide. For girls, they will try to find themselves an identity. Sometimes they will become anorexic or epileptic as well. And for adults as well, there are many problems and many diseases they can have. So, um, uh, sometimes it can be good to wear a mask and pretend we are just like other people at work, for instance. That uh, facilitates our communication and our relations with other people, say, with 98% uh, of the people we meet. So, I would like to come back to this point, which is emotional cleaning and the way of how to regulate my emotions. Of course, there is no universal solution. I would like to give you the options that I personally use myself. And I think emotional cleaning is very important. You should do it every day. Some people need to do it twice a day as well. One way of doing this is sports. And I know there are certain people here that are very active um, from a physical point of view. But then I've also noticed that our friend, men's and friends from America, for instance, many of them have been taking the lifts or the elevators rather than the stairs, and they haven't been using our gym. So sometimes sports isn't enough. We need to work on our negative emotions, that is uh, the term that psychologists use. Our negative emotions are fear, anger, shame, sadness and guilt. And you should know that these are five emotions that we all have inside us. And we need to connect with them. Sometimes those emotions are on a very unconscious level, but we need to be aware of all of them. Some emotions may come out easy, easily and be, may be more visible to us. Some people may get angry really easily, whereas other people may cry a lot. But you should know that all five aspects